Unit 2 The Atmosphere and Protecting Planet Earth Lesson 1 The Atmospheric Layers Atmospheric Envelope of the Earth It is a gaseous envelope rotating with the Earth around its axis and it extends about 1000 km above the sea level. Atmospheric Pressure it is the weight of air column of an atmosphere height on a unit area, one centimeter squared or one meter squared. Note the following: the measuring unit of atmospheric pressure is bar or millibar (mb), and hence one bar equals one thousand millibar. The atmospheric pressure at sea level is called normal atmospheric pressure and it equals 1013.25 millibar or 1013.25 millibar. The atmospheric pressure differs from one place to another according to the change of height from the sea level. As you can see from this demo, if we have a balloon, its pressure on the sea level is 1013.25 by increasing its elevation from the ground say to the height of about 10.64 km its pressure decreases to 324.24 millibar by increasing its height to be about 21 km its pressure decreases to about 45 millibar by increasing the height again to about 31 km, its pressure decreased to about 10 millibar. So the atmospheric pressure differs from one place to another according to the change of the height from the sea level. By increasing the height, the pressure decreases. By increasing the height from the sea level, the pressure decreases. Give reason 4. As the height above the sea level increases, the atmospheric pressure decreases. If we have a person on the top of this mountain, it is affected by a lower pressure than that the same person which is on the ground, on sea level. This is due to decreasing the length of air column above him. Give reason 4. As we go under the sea level, the atmospheric pressure increases. If we go under the water surface, we will be affected by a higher atmospheric pressure. This is due to increasing the length of air column. This is the height of atmospheric envelope which is equal to about 1000 km from sea level until the end of the atmospheric envelope. We will note the following. 50% of the mass of atmospheric air is present at the area between sea level and 3 km height. So almost half the mass of atmospheric air is present at the area between sea level and 3 km height only. This means that about 997 km contains only 50% of the mass of the atmospheric air. Also, 90% of the mass of the atmospheric air is present up to 16 km height above sea level. This means that the area between sea level and up to 16 km height contains about 90% of the mass of the atmospheric air. This means that the rest of the atmospheric envelope, which is about 984 km, contains only 10% of the mass of the atmospheric air. This means that the density of air decreases by increasing the elevation by increasing the height above the sea level.
barometers. The atmospheric pressure, as you can see from this video, is measured by an instrument which is called barometer. As you can see, by increasing the pressure, the reading of barometer increases. We have many types of barometers. We will study only two types. The first type is called aneroid. And as you can see, aneroid it is a type of barometers which is used to determine the possible day weather. According to the change in pressure, the reading of aneroid it changes from stormy, rain, change, fair or dry. These are the conditions of weather. The second type of barometers is altimeter. Altimeter, as you can see, it is an instrument which is used by pilots in aeroplanes to measure the elevation, to measure the height from the sea level, as you can see, based on the atmospheric pressure. Isobar. Isobar, it is a curved line that joins the points of equal pressure in atmospheric pressure maps. This is called atmospheric pressure maps, like the one that we see in news. This atmospheric pressure maps contains curves. This curve joins the areas which have equal atmospheric pressure. This means that all cities lies on this curve, they have the same atmospheric pressure, which is 1012 millibar. And all cities which lie on this curve, they have the same atmospheric pressure, which is 1008 millibar, and so on. Direction of wind. The wind moves from areas of high atmospheric pressure to the areas of low atmospheric pressure. Layers of atmospheric envelope. Layers of atmospheric envelopes are the first layer is troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and finally thermosphere. So, atmospheric envelope is consists of four layers troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. Let's talk about troposphere. Give reason for the first layer is called the troposphere. It means the disturbed layer. This is because all atmospheric turbulences or weather changes take place in it. Rains, clouds, storms occur in the troposphere layer. Its thickness. The thickness of troposphere layer is 13 km from sea level to its end. So the thickness of the first layer is 13 km. Temperature at the layer. As you can see, the temperature at this layer decreases gradually until it reaches negative 60 at its end. So the temperature decreases with a rate of 6.5 degrees Celsius for each one kilometer height until it reaches the lowest value of about negative 60 degree at its end. The end of troposphere layer is called tropopause. So the temperature at tropopause is negative 60 degrees Celsius. Atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure decreases gradually as we go above the sea level until it reaches 100 millibar at its end at trobo pose which is equivalent to 0.1 of the normal atmospheric pressure because if you divided 100 divided 1000 13.25 which is the normal atmospheric pressure it will be approximately equal 0.1 of its normal atmospheric pressure Troposphere contains 75% of the atmosphere mass 
Therefore, all atmospheric phenomena such as rain, wind, clouds take place in this layer. Also, this layer contains 99% of atmospheric water vapor, which organizes the Earth's temperature. Air movement in troposphere. Air moves vertically, as you can see from this video. Air moves vertically because hot air moves upward while cold air falls downward. If we put the cold liquid down and the hot liquid upward, there won't be any movement. This is because the density of hot air is less than the density of cold air. So hot air moves up while cold air moves down. Important rules. To calculate the temperature at a certain height, for example on the top of a mountain, we have to know the temperature at sea level or at its bottom minus 6.5 times the height of mountain in kilometer. This is because the temperature decreases at troposphere by the rate of 6.5 for each 1 kilometer height. If you want to find the temperature at the bottom of the mountain or at sea level, you have to find the temperature at the top of the mountain plus 6.5 times the height of the mountain in kilometer. If you want to find the height, you have to find its temperature. You have to find the temperature at its bottom minus its temperature at its top divided by 6.5. The second layer is stratosphere layer. Stratosphere also it is called the ozonic atmospheric envelope. This is because it contains ozone layer. Its thickness. The thickness of stratosphere layer is 37 km. Temperature at stratosphere layer. As you can see, the temperature increases gradually from negative 60 at its beginning till it reaches zero at its end. Temperature at stratosphere increases from negative 60 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius at its end or at, or at stratopause. This is due to the absorption of ultraviolet rays by ozone layer. Absorption of ultraviolet rays increases the temperature of this layer. Atmospheric pressure. Also by increasing the height, atmospheric pressure decreases until it reaches 1 millibar only at its end at stratopause or which is equivalent to 0.001 of the normal atmospheric pressure. Because if you divided 1 by the normal atmospheric pressure which is equal to 1013.25 you will get approximately 0.001 of the normal atmospheric pressure. Stratosphere contains most of ozone gas which is found in atmospheric envelope between heights from 20 km to 40 km. Air movement. Air is moved horizontally in this layer. So its lower part doesn't contain clouds or weather changes. So pilots prefer to fly their planes in this layer. The third layer is mesosphere. It is called mesosphere because it is the middle layer and also the coldest layer. The thickness of this layer is 35 km. Temperature at this layer. As you can see, the temperature at this layer decreases gradually. The temperature starts at zero at its beginning, then decreases gradually until it reaches negative 90 at its end, at mesopause. So its temperature 
reaches negative 90 degrees Celsius at its end at mesopause. Atmospheric pressure. Its atmospheric pressure decreases by increasing the height gradually until it reaches only 0.01 millibar at its end at mesopause. It contains limited quantities of helium and hydrogen gases only, so it is much vacuumed or highly rarefied, almost empty. So, luminous matters are formed in such layer. This is due to its friction with air molecules. As you can see, all luminous matters are formed in mesosphere layer due to friction with air molecules. The fourth layer is thermosphere layer. Thermosphere layers is called by this name because it is the hottest layer of atmospheric envelope. The thickness of thermosphere layer is 590 km. Temperature at this layer increases gradually from negative 90 up to 1200 degrees Celsius at its end. It contains charged ions in its upper part. So this part, because it contains ions, is known as ionosphere. Ionosphere layer. What's meant by ionosphere layer? It is a layer that contains charged ions and it has an important role in wireless communications. As you can see from this video, this is the ionosphere layer. It reflects the wireless communications. So it plays an important role in telecommunications and wireless communications. Give reason four. Ionosphere is very important in wireless communications. This is because it reflects radio waves transmitted by radio stations and communication centers. Van Allen belts, as you can see from this video, they are two magnetic belts surrounding ionosphere and they play an important role in scattering of harmful charged cosmic radiations. Give reason for the harmful charged cosmic radiations are scattered away from the Earth before entering ionosphere. This is due to the presence of Van Allen belts. Aurora phenomenon. It is a phenomenon that appears as a brightly colored light curtain seen from both poles, the north and south poles of the earth. This bright color curtains represent aurora. Exosphere. It is a region in which the atmospheric envelope, the final layer, is inserted with the outer space. It is the final layer which is attached to the outer space. In exosphere, satellites orbit around the Earth with cameras and telescopes. So the layer that contains satellites. It's called the exosphere. Tropopause. It is a region between troposphere and stratosphere. Stratopause. It is the region between stratosphere and mesosphere. Finally, mesopause. It is the region between mesosphere and thermosphere. This is the end of lesson one. Thanks for watching.